much. Anna Holligan, thank you very much indeed for that. The other one we're watching, of course, is the United States. There's been a lot written these past days about Joe Biden's future in the White House. Polling suggests that two thirds of Americans think he is too old to run again. But whatever opposition there might be to a Biden-Trump rematch, that would be what they're going to get, or at least it seems that way. Trump is nearly 40 points ahead of the other six challengers running in the Republican primaries. And on the Democrat side of the ledger, only a handful of names have come forward. Dean Phillips, the representative from Minnesota, who's barely made a dint in the polls. Uh, there's Marianne Williamson, second time she's running, on the left, but barely a ripple again in the polling. And then there is Jason Palmer, an entrepreneur and investor who joined the race two weeks ago. He's been an executive and leadership uh, positions at Microsoft, Kaplan Education, uh, also at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And at 51, he is young enough to be Joe Biden's grandchild. And yes, like many Americans, he thinks it is time for some new blood. Jason Palmer, welcome to the programme. Uh, so tell us, what would a Jason Palmer presidency look like? Well, the, first of all, Christian, thanks for having me on. The number one thing would be that it would be focused on building the talent in America. Um, we have more than 330 million people in the United States, and many of those people are concerned about how their jobs and how their lives are changing because of technological innovation, because of the global conflicts that you were just showing on your show. And there actually are ways to upgrade people's skills and get them to what we call quality jobs. These are salaried jobs that pay between $50,000 and $90,000 a year. We know how to do it. Uh, I know how to do it because I've been investing in companies that are helping upskill people now for more than a decade. Mm. Uh, well, the polling is interesting. Um, there's an, an NBC poll out this week uh, in a hypothetical head-to-head -head between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. 46% of the 18 to 34 year olds said they'd vote Trump, 44% Biden, which is a, a huge change around from 2020. 60% of that group voted for Biden in the exit poll. Why yeah. has that support drifted away from the president? Well, I spend a lot of time with young people and you saw it just a minute ago in my uh, campaign launch video. And young people don't feel like they're being heard on the issues they care most about. Some of those issues are climate change, uh, gun safety, um, actually making sure that they get to a quality job, that they have an economic future that's better than their parents. Right now, most young people believe that their economic future is worse than what their parents had. Mm -hmm. And they believe that the, the current administration has been focused on different things than their future. Um, they really want someone to step forward, and this is partly why I stepped forward, uh, who actually understands them, has been working with them. I've been working with colleges and universities now for more than 15 years. In fact, I was even an entrepreneur in college way back in the day when I started my first business. I just understand young people. Young people uh, are my people. I still consider myself young, in fact. <laughs> well, compared to the president, you are. I am young. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're about the youngest in the field. Um, That's right. But let me ask you this. Look. I, I take everything that you're saying, but I, I don't think I'm preempting the primaries to suggest that you won't be the next president of, of the United States. Why don't you take those thoughts and run for Congress? Or is this a short way of doing that? Is this a way to, to up your profile very quickly? No, this is much more about making sure that this election is not... Uh, a negative election, one that brings America down, that ruins our reputation in the world like the last elections have. Um, we really need to get back to civility, mm. conversations with each other. I mean, my the reason why I describe myself as the purple president is I've been uh, able to bring people together from the left and the right, actually from or all four corners of the political spectrum for my entire life. Mm. That's what you have to do as a business person. That's what you have to do as somebody who's trying to move a movement forward. Mm. And uh, although you say I'm not going to be the next president, we need to let the voters decide. Well, absolutely. I, do you think you'd get a chance to debate the president? What would you have to do to get My goal is to there? debate Joe Biden. Absolutely. I definitely would so love to So what would you need for that? Well... Right now in the United States, the DNC has declared that there will be no presidential debates that are officially sponsored by the DNC. Oh. However, uh, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a startup person. And so behind the scenes, we are working with a number of organizations to hopefully pull together our first debate in January and a second debate in February. 
And of course, Joe Biden will be invited to those. But I've been kind of a, a guerrilla entrepreneur my whole yeah. life. And staging a debate is not that hard. It doesn't okay. need to be officially sanctioned. We can pull it together. Do me one favor, will you? If you do become the next president, will you give me the first interview? I would give you the first interview, of course. Jason Palmer, lovely to talk to you. Best of luck on the campaign trail.